morning and thank you for joining us. We're going to head on into our first song, which is O Come All Ye Faithful. Welcome to MCC of the Blue Ridge. If you haven't done so already, please silence your phone at this time. We have a couple of quick announcements. Tuesday night Bible study will not meet this week. Kathy is going to be out of town, so we're going to take a week off. We will resume next week at 7 p.m. here in person if you want to come in person, or it will be broadcast live on Facebook if you want to check it out that way. Thank you to all who contributed or helped deliver the Thanksgiving baskets last week. We were able to serve nine families thanks to your generosity. Yes. And we're now taking donations to provide Christmas gifts for some children who have attended church with us in the last couple years. If you'd like to contribute, please write children on your check, offering envelope, or in the PayPal comments section. Mike has some... Um, specific gifts that the children have asked for. So if you want to buy something specific, talk to Mike. He can give you some details. So thank you very much. And we'll head on into our next, the Advent. Today we begin our celebration of Advent. On these four Sundays leading up to Christmas, we will rejoice in the great gift that is ours in Jesus Christ. To help us celebrate, we'll be lighting the candles of the Advent wreath. The candles signify that Jesus is the light of the world. The evergreens remind us that he is life and brings life to us. All these are arranged in a circle because life in Christ has no end. Each Sunday, we will light an additional candle. Then on Christmas Day, we will light all the candles, including the center one, the Christ candle. As we do, we will rejoice that Christ has come to us. He is Emmanuel, God with us. On this first Sunday of Advent, we light the candle of hope. Hope is our assurance that God will finish all they have started. Hope is our confidence that God will do all that has been promised. All the promises of God are fulfilled in Jesus Christ. He is our hope today and forever. Thanks be to God for this indescribable gift. If you will join us in our next song, Come Christians Join to Sing.
December 1st, we recognize World AIDS Day. The symbol for, for this is the red ribbon, and we have a red ribbon litany that we're going to read together. I'll read the, the light print, and if you'll read with me in the bold. The red of the ribbon is love, a symbol of our passion and tolerance toward those affected. The red of the ribbon is our pain from the loss of so many. The red of the ribbon is our anger about the lack of a cure, the disparity of treatments, and the ignorance that still persists. The red of the ribbon is a warning to the world that we will never give up hope and never stop fighting. We pray that your love will unite us into a community of grace and discovery, cleanse from us anything that would sap our strength for togetherness, free us from negative imaginations and the barriers that sometimes keep us apart. In this time, refresh, us, refresh in us the dream of a better world and put before us new possibilities for service. Renew in us your compassion so that we may be a people with loving purposes. We come together to be your miracles in a troubled world. Encircle us, O oh God. Keep love within, hatred out. Encircle us, O oh God. Keep joy within, despair out. Encircle us, O oh God. Keep hope within, discouragement out. Encircle us, O oh God. Keep peace within, disharmony out. Encircle us, O oh God, and may we go forth in peace. One of my favorite things about this church is that we're a praying church. Does anyone have any prayer requests or praises that you'd like to share this morning, Wendy? Um, praise that they didn't have to go too deep into my head this time around, so there you go. I just have to wear a hat for a while. <laughs> Amen. Amen for Aaron that. Aaron kind of looks goofy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Anyway, Laura? Uh, yeah, prayers for my aunt Sheila and her family. She's an aunt by marriage. Her her mom passed away yesterday, so um, she's got grandkids, great grandkids. Just uh, they're in Alabama, so just prayers for them. Okay. Prayers for Laura's family. Anyone else? Jeff. Just prayers for my dad. Last weekend was one of those times you got phone calls, got weak. Yeah. And uh, he pulled through on this several episode. Praise for Jeff and his dad and his family. Liz? I have a blessing. My granddaughter, who's very <clears throat> few months old, had literally had probably three plus weeks of absolute nasal congestion in oh. an infant of just a few months old. It's devastating. She is clear of it. By Thanksgiving, we got her smiling and crying for more milk. She was a darling, and she wasn't snuffling. I was so happy because it's so dangerous. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? Yes, Mark. Prayer for my spouse, Randolph, who died uh, two years ago, right before Christmas Day. We've been together for 56 years. Oh. It was a lovely, caring, caring person. Any unspokens? All right, please join me in prayer. Heavenly Creator, we know you know our needs. We know you know that our the things that we want. And we trust that you are right there. Maybe not providing the things that we want, but giving us everything that we need. We come before you with prayers of healing and hope, comfort and peace. For those things that, those people that are lost that just always hurt. We trust you 
to care for us and to love us. In your name, amen. amen. All right, so um, we've come to the time of the service that we'll uh, collect the offering. Um, and I um, was thinking about what I wanted to say, and I think the main thing I want to um, share is just that it's important to remember that um, you know God gives us gifts in many different forms, and that also means that um, the gifts that we give back in celebration and worship of God can also look different. Um, we do need money. We live in a world where, unfortunately, that's just the way things work. So, uh, but I also uh, encourage you that if um, if that's not something that you can do right now, um, that you be praying for and thinking of ways that you know you might be able to give in other ways. We always need um, help with. Um, different um, volunteer opportunities around the church, time, energy, those are awful, also uh, really good offerings. So um, I ask that you give as you're able um, to the plate, that you touch as it come around and bless it with your touch, uh, and also be thinking of those ways um, that you might be able to um, follow God's call to, to give as, um, as they're leading you. All right, thank you. <clears throat> Track 14.
thank you so much for uh, the gifts that were offered today, uh, both monetary and otherwise. Uh, we ask that you would bless it um, to your service and us to your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 first portion of the scripture for today is from Matthew chapter 1 verses 18 through 25. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be pregnant from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to divorce her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall become pregnant and give birth to a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had given birth to a son, and he named him Jesus. The second portion is from Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. Listen, I am standing at the door knocking. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and eat with you and you with me. If you will, please help me in welcoming Roger Cook. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon for me. I work nice. It's this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, those who work nice. <laughs> I do. It's so great to be back here at MCC. And so, an honor and a blessing to be bringing you the first three of the Advent, four Advent messages this season. Um, and I don't know about you guys, but you know, I, I love Christmas. I, Thanksgiving, I had a great Thanksgiving. I hope you had a great Thanksgiving. But I love Christmas. And this is going to be a little interactive. You know, um, we'll wake us up and. Uh, like I says, one o'clock. You should be awake, but I know sometimes <laughs> we're not. Um, who here? When's what's the earliest you watched a Christmas? Or, or who has already watched a Christmas movie? Have you already watched a Christmas? Movie? Okay. What's the earliest Christmas movie you've watched this year? Mine was October the eighth. Wow. Because uh, I love Christmas. I usually don't until October thirty first. But <laughs> but I, I was having a down time and I watched um, Elf on uh, you know, one of the more biblical ones I like. Um, <laughs> On October 8th. Uh, so anybody else here kind of before Thanksgiving watch a Christmas movie? No one? Okay. Uh, how about Christmas music? Anybody listen to Christmas music already? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anybody listen to it before Thanksgiving? Yeah. All right. <laughs> What's some of your uh, favorite Thanksgiving songs or music? Or, or, or sorry, Christmas songs. Mary, did you know? Mary, did you know? Love that one. That's a beautiful one. Love that one, and, and I love a lot of the thought behind that too, because I, 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 that's a message in itself. I'm not going to go that one. I love that song. I, well, what's another one? Actually, God rest you, Mary John Owens. Yeah, like oh, I, know, I love that one too. I was like, it was giving me chills. I love that song. Yeah. I love that. That was a beautiful arrangement. Thank you so much. Um, anyone else have a favorite song or movie they want to tell about? Jeffrey. Little Drummer Boy. Little Drummer Boy. Absolutely. I got to tell you now. I was raised by a, a, a wonderful mom. Uh, with a sixth grade education, no driver's license, and six of his kids. And she would tell me that the little drummer boy and the donkey and all that was in the Bible if you looked hard enough to find it. So, so I was always like, where's the little drummer boy out in the Bible, Mom? It's in there if you look hard enough. You'll find it. <laughs> <laughs> and that, um, I, I love her to death. But I love this season. I love this season. And I'm also aware, though, that this is not a, a wonderful season for everybody for various reasons. It's a tough season. That's why I think it's powerful that we start... Um, with the first advent of hope. Because this is really not Christmas. You know, advent is not Christmas. It's, I think that's a, a misconception a lot of us have. Advent it, you know, means the, the coming. You know, so we're, we're here anticipating the first coming of Jesus. You know, when we look back to that anticipation, 
and also um, we're going to look about, at, about the advent of the second coming. You know, we look back to the first and look forward to, to the next. And uh, today we're going to talk about another advent that I believe that we could look at as well. But it's a wonderful, beautiful time as a family of Christ that we can come together. And I'm glad as we are coming together right now. And um, I want to, if we could, uh, before we uh, get started, just want to open in a word of prayer. Uh, if we could, just to help us relax, help us pray. You can do what I do. You don't have to do what I do. There's something I've been doing recently that's really helping me is I breathe first. So I've got a lot going on in my head, a lot going on in my heart. So I breathe. I'm going to take a couple of deep breaths in, hold for a few seconds, let it, let it breath the breath out, do that a couple of times, and then I'll pray. I invite you to do that. You don't have to do that. But if you could bow our heads, let us pray. You can breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. That the God of my understanding come before you as a people of your word, a people of your faith, a people of your love. And we can laugh and talk about good favorite movies and movies and times of holidays, but a lot of our favorite memories are also sprinkled with feelings of loss, feelings of loneliness, feelings of how am I going to get through this year? And I thank you as I'm reminded in your word you tell us that we're surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses that just because those are no longer physically here with us does not mean that they're gone, that our relationship with them has changed. And I encourage us during these times to pray, to talk, to listen. And I encourage one of, everyone, everyone here to listen to those around you and especially just love on those who are lonely, love on those who are in need and just be the people of God. I love MCC Church. I love MCC the Blue Ridge. And I just love the group of people that's here because I know that they'll do this. I know they'll love in their communities. And I just think if we could all do that, our neighborhoods and our communities, our nation and our world would be different. As you look today, Lord, to the first advent of hope, we're going to see that in times of great difficulty, there's always hope. We love you and we thank you. By all the names that you're known, we pray. And amen. 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 And that's really what I want to look at is even in times of difficulty, there's hope. And I want to look um, actually going to be reading a letter to you from a German theologian named Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Uh, he wrote a little book called God is in the Manger. And he was, I always love when people talk about how like, boring church is or boring pastors are. The pastors are pretty boring sometimes. You know, we, we don't do a lot of exciting things. We read a lot. But you know, Dietrich Bonhoeffer was part, or accused of being part of the assassination temple, Adolf Hitler. That's pretty cool. You know, made movies about his life. He's in a lot of other movies that his stories in a lot of other movies. But he wrote a letter to his family during Advent while he was being held in a prison um, awaiting to be, you know, to be put to death for his part of the assassination attempt. So if there was ever someone who was in a difficult time and yet finding hope, I think we can learn a lot from this letter. And I want to read um, part of this letter that he wrote to his family you ain't got to take your glasses off to read. It makes no sense to me either. Um, and it's kind of moved. I think I'll start first with the second passage of Scripture, so the first as we planned. The Revelation 3.20. Hey, hold on. I'm ringing. I turned my phone off. I'm sorry. Revelation 3.20. Jesus stands at the door knocking. I'm just going to cover that part right now. Jesus stands at the door knocking. Dietrich writes, In total reality, Jesus comes in the form of a beggar, of the impoverished human child in ragged clothes, asking for help. 
Jesus confronts you and every person that you meet. As long as there are people, Christ will walk the earth as your neighbor, as the one through whom God calls you, speaks to you, makes demands of you. And this is the great seriousness, I think, and the great blessedness of the Advent message. Christ is standing at the door, and Jesus lives in the form of a human being among us. Do you want to close the door or open it? It may strike us as strange to see Christ in such a near face, but, but, but Jesus said it. And those who withdraw from the serious reality of the Advent message cannot talk of the coming of Christ in their heart either. Christ is knocking, and it's not Christmas. But it's also not yet the great last Advent, the coming of Christ. Through all the Advents of our life that we will celebrate, there is the long, the last Advent. When the world will see, see, I'm making all things new. Revelation 21 5. The Advent season is a season of waiting, but our whole life is an Advent season, that is. A season of waiting for the last Advent, for the time when there will be a new heaven and a new earth. We can, and we should also, celebrate Christmas despite the ruins around us. I think of you as you now sit together with the children and with all the Advent decorations, as in the earlier years you did with us. We must do all this even more intensely because we do not know how much longer we have. To the Bonhoeffer's parents, November 29th, 1943, written from the Teagle prison camp. In difficulty, there's hope. Did you hear, I mean, how he talked about Christmas? You know, he's in a place where he had no community, and he's saying, writing a letter, you know, I, I, I can see with the children. I can see the Advent decorations. I can see the decorations. You know, he was writing with hope in a place of hopelessness. And I think that we can have that hope. Because it is difficult. We are remembering lost loved ones this holiday season. We, we, our, our families may be separated. Our families may be in places where we're um, not as close as we'd like to be or as close as we have been. But there's still hope. I think that, that's the promise of today, of this candle, of this Advent season. There's also the, the hope candle is also the candle of prophecy. And that's why I chose that Matthew passage. Is, is that, that was a promise of hope in difficult times. Um, going towards the first Advent. When we read it here, I mean, this is not, we've heard it so much and we sing it every year. We, it's one of cards that we don't think about what it would be like, but some of us consider what Mary and Joseph are going through at that moment. It's a very difficult time in a small village where everybody knew everybody else. Everybody knew good business. And I'm coming to find out that Radford, Salem, Rona are not big towns. Anybody here have realized everybody knows your business yet? Anybody, everybody knows your business. And Mary and Joseph were there. They know what that's like. It was difficult, yet they had hope. Matthew 1, 18 25. Listen to the difficulty, listen to the hope. Now, the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way when his mother married and engaged to Joseph before they lived together. She was found to be pregnant from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to divorce her quietly. But just then, when they had then resolved to do this, the angel of the Lord appeared to them in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. The child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, and he will save his people from their sins. And all this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look. The virgin shall become pregnant and give birth to a son. They shall call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, took, him as, took her as his wife, and had no marital relations and, with her until she had given birth to a son. And he named him Jesus. Words of hope, words of prophecy. Then again, Revelation 3.20, listen, I'm standing at the door knocking. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come into you and eat with you, and you with me. There's two advents, there's two comings. One we look back to and honor, revere, and celebrate, and contemplate, and one to anticipate. 
But did you hear what Dietrich Bonhoeffer challenged us with about another Advent? The coming of Jesus this Advent season. The coming of Jesus this Christmas season. The coming of Jesus in your life every day when you meet Jesus in the face of people. Think about that this season. I know life's hard. I know life's difficult. And life is hard and difficult for a lot of other people. We have no idea. And what are you going to do when you meet Jesus this Christmas season? Are you going to open the door or are you going to close the door? And this is, I'm not, I'm not the person that you got to open the door to everybody. There's some people who usually close that door and watch, watch, or you know, help them out the door. You know, <laughs> so there are some of those people. I'll be, I'm, I'm not that guy that's okay, welcome everybody. No, don't do that. Your mental health can't take this. <laughs> but there are those people, led by the Spirit, led by love, led by your heart. What do you want to do? That's why I love MCC the Blue Ridge. When I sit here about what you guys did at Thanksgiving, what you going to do at Christmas. I love you guys for that. But to, to me, to me, that is what the church of Jesus Christ is supposed to do. And I love that. I love that. I, I, I'm, I'm never excited or energized or cheered by Christian life centers being built or large ed- edifices being built. But I hear you're taking up money. Why well, I know money's tight. Um, they may take care of families that otherwise wouldn't have Thanksgiving. Patty Pugh gave you know, some food and, and then Jeffrey had to meet my wife to get it because I work nights, she works days, and I like to sleep because this is the morning for me, as I said earlier. And Jeffrey brought us, you know, met my wife with food. We, we took food to our, our ministry. And I tear up saying that in Thanksgiving Day, I wasn't even going to look. I was supposed to go check and see, and the box was empty. I filled it up. Come back later, Thanksgiving Day, the box is empty. I filled it up. Our food box, and it hit me. The students are out. Who's taking all this food? Families in need in our community because of you. Thank you for that. Jesus is at the door, and you answered. Jesus is at the door with these families of Thanksgiving, and you answered. Jesus is at the door with the the Christmas coming up, and you're answering. But also, Jesus is at the door in your heartbreak, your heartache, your loneliness, and your need. I just pray this Christmas you will answer. I encourage you to remember one point. Trying to get easier in my messages. I love 17, 12 points, but I'm the only one that does. So I'm going to give you one to remember. We open the door or close the door to Jesus this Advent season. Thank you, guys. I love you. practice an open communion, which means you don't have to be a member of this church or any church to participate. All you need to have is a desire to grow closer to God. You have the little communion cups in your your, uh, packets. If you would, just go ahead and take those out. You can partake at any point during, during this time. Holy Creator, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, and on these gifts of bread and juice. Let them be the body and blood of Christ for us, so that we may be the body of Christ for the world, liberated by his witness, passion, and life. Be with us, Holy Spirit. Fill us, so you can move through us. Amen. Amen. of Christ working for us.
We take these gifts, we remember the mystery of our faith when we say, Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ is coming again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 